everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Bank and Pam, man. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support, man. We in here, man. We rolling, man. We rolling with these 33 years of prison stories, man. I'm just trying to bring y'all all these experiences that I had, you know, while I was incarcerated. So many, so many stories, so many different characters, so many different uh, episodes. So I'm just trying to bring them to you as they come to my mind. I appreciate all the support, man. I appreciate everybody who subscribed to my channel. I appreciate everybody who leave a like, leave a comment. I'm trying to tell y'all that means so much. You know, I try not to get discouraged because other people is doing what they doing and I'm doing what I'm doing, but I need this stuff to grow because I want this message to be spread out to everybody, man. So like I always tell y'all, tell a friend to tell a friend, man, to come over here and join this movement, man. We in the 50s, man. We like 56,700. We need to get up to 100K. We need to get up to 200K and we need to just keep on going and keep on climbing until we uh get this message where it could be to everybody, man. The more subscribers we got, the more people that we can reach. So that's our goal, to get this thing out here to everybody, man. So TBP, man, stand up. Let's go, man. Let's rock and roll, man. I'm rolling with y'all, man, so y'all roll with me. Uh, this story right here, man, I was just thinking about, you know, going through the things in my mind. I just came up with uh, all the things that I've seen over the years, man, in that child hall. And what we call the child hall is the kitchen, man. That's the kitchen. That's where we go to eat. That's where you mingle with other people from different blocks, from different uh, buildings and everything. So it's, it's, it's more or less like a congregation, man, where people that you don't usually get to see or you don't usually get to deal with, that's who you get to deal with when you go to the kitchen, man, when you go to the child hall. So, man, I've seen so many things jump off in that child hall, man. So many things happen in there, man. It's just, it, it's a crazy jump. And to me, it's more like, a, a, it's like a death trap, man, for real, because of the simple fact that they, it was so much stuff popping off in the kitchen that they start locking the doors. Once they get everybody in there, a certain amount of people where all the tables is filled, they'll lock the doors, they'll have Officers on the outside of each door, the door that you come in, the door that you exit, and they have officers out there on each one of the doors on the ready, and then they have officers out there on the boulevard in case something pop off. They can basically have a confined environment where there's not that many people where they can control. Because if they just left the doors open and something pop off, dudes can run from the other kitchen. There's two kitchens side by side. Mostly on all prisons, it's more than one kitchen. It's like side by side kitchens. They put people over on this side, people on this side. So they they will have it like that. Whereas to they have the doors locked because if they leave the doors open and something pop off and your homeboy in here getting beat up, getting drugged, getting something happen to him, all the dudes can hear about it, come running over there and come in. But when they got the doors locked, they they kill all of that. So they start locking them doors, and when them doors is locked, and Something pop off in there, then, you know, you're on your own. <laughs> you know, basically the same way you are in prison. You're on your own. You, you, you really can't rely on nobody but yourself to save yourself, you know. And in that kitchen, man, it goes down. You heard me? I'm talking about it goes down in that kitchen, man. Because people would get in there or people would have a problem with somebody. Someone would owe them money or dudes would have beef or they'll say, well, man, come to the kitchen, man. Let me holler at you. So they'll come over there to the kitchen and they would sit there and try to, you know, fix their differences or or talk out what they got going on. Or is this, if, if it's a debt, dudes be over there talking about, man, what you owe me, da 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 you ain't paying me, you're supposed to pay this time, blah, blah, blah. And usually, man, if uh if they don't get the right answers, man, bang, 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 or yeek, yeek, it, it jumps off. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, done, I done seen so many things in that kitchen. And, you know, as I've told y'all, 
years and years and years I ain't going in that kitchen. The only time I really went in the kitchen was when I was going over there to do some of the same thing. Meet somebody, confront somebody, holler at somebody that just got on the compound that I didn't, haven't seen in years. They said, man, tell me, come to the, to the kitchen, holler at me, something like that. Other than that, I wouldn't even go over there because of the fact that the food was garbage. <laughs> The smell in the kitchen was hor horrific. They actually had, uh, what do you call them things? Insects, uh, insect uh, zappers in there. They got the, the, the flash uh, strips hanging, you know, in a place that you eat. So you go in there to eat and they got a fly trap hanging with a thousand flies, dead flies on it. They got the zapper where the flies get zapped, you know, I, I didn't want to eat in that environment, let alone deal with the type of food that they were serving that you have to, to eat while you was in there. So to me, the kitchen was really off limits. I didn't really like to go over there at all. But when I did go over there, the times I did go over there, like I said, I've seen many, many things over there, man. Going all the way back to when I first, you know, got into prison. And I can remember leaving, leaving um, Southampton receiving leaving there, going to the wall, leaving the wall, going to Augusta. When I got to Augusta, that's when I really started seeing things. That's when things really started popping off, man. I seen so many fights. Uh, <laughs> Bethlehem used in the kitchen that uh, it's just amazing. You know, I can remember one of the first things I seen when I was in there, the first fights I seen when I was in there. Dude was just arguing over who got to the machine first. Like, they got... Ice machine, coffee machine in the morning, ice machine, and then they got a juice machine where you get your juice out of. So, you know, dudes will go up there and get juice, get extra juice, you know, you know, do what they got to do, you know, to get what they want. And you get up there, you in the line, you know, they, they, they depending upon you to exercise your own judgment to get in the line, follow the line, you know what I'm saying, whatever, whatever. It ain't no police in there telling you go here, go there, go there. So... Dudes will get the arguing over the juice, man. It might be the last bound of juice, uh, last last bit of grape juice, last bit of fruit punch or whatever. And dudes will get the arguing over that. So I remember dudes was getting up there in the line for the fruit punch and another dude cut the line. So he was like, hold on, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm in front of you, man. What you doing? He was like, man, ain't nothing but some juice, man. This is steak juice. Man, don't be arguing to me about no juice. That's all he had to say. Dude just dropped his cup. Boom! Took off on him. They running it. They rumbling in the kitchen. When they get to the rumbling in the kitchen, man, somebody will call the code. They'll call the code, man. They'll, they'll unlock the doors. They'll let you let all the police come flooding in, and they'll come in and try to break the situation up. But dudes in the kitchen is just up there looking, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on? And that's just what goes on in there. Dudes will get to rumbling in there at any moment for anything. And then you got this thing called, uh, what they call this, beat the deuce. I don't, I never understood why they call that is beat the dudes or whatever. Even the police use that same, you know, uh, lingo, beat the deuce. I caught you beating the deuce, man, woo, woo, woo. Beating the deuce mean when you go through the line to get your tray, you know, you, you, you eat your tray and then you turn around and try to get back in the line and go get another tray. You, you're not afforded but one tray when you go in there. But like I say, you might got an officer. They do have one officer in there, maybe two sometimes, depending on what institution you are. And they have an officer up at the front of the line. And what they're going by is his judgment and his sight. They remember, I seen you, I seen you, I seen you. And, you know, that's 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 not, you know what I'm saying, always accurate. Because you could think you seen somebody, but he looked like somebody else. So they may tell you to get out of the line, man, you already got a tray when you may not have got a tray at all. But they may be right at some points. You come through there and you already got a tray. So, man, you already got a tray. Put your tray back. But dudes will buck on that. Man, they ain't got no tray. Woo -woo, and take the tray anyway. Now, what they're supposed to do is just go ahead and write you up and give you a charge. But sometimes you have an overzealous officer who might show off. Man, man, give me the tray. Yeah. Try to take the tray away from you. You know, because he feel like you getting over on him. You don't pay for nothing, man. These ain't your trays. These stay trays. You get paid to be a correction officer. So they'll go above and beyond and try some stupid stuff like that. And normally, it all depends on who the inmate is. If it's an inmate or if it's a convict, if it's a convict, nine times out of ten, he not going to let you take nothing out of his hand. If you try to take it, then he going to take off on you. Regardless of 
the, 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 the drama he gonna go through, the, 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 all of that, you know what I'm saying? But he's just not gonna be disrespected in front of his peers. He's not gonna be disrespected. He's not gonna let you disrespect my child to take some out of his hand. And especially with him knowing if he's a convict, he know this is not your job. It's not your job. If you feel like I got an extra trade, man, write me a charge. Give me a charge. Do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Boom. And that's that. But, man, you had these officers, man, they'll try to take the tray out your hand. And I can remember, man, dude coming through the, through the line. And he was like, man, you already been through the line. He was like, bro, I ain't been through this line, man. I'm getting my tray. He was like, nah, you ain't getting no tray. You ain't been through the line. So he tried to block them off at first. You know, like, look, you ain't getting the tray, dude. Like, man, you better get out of my way. He get the tray when the tray come through the slide. He grabbed the tray. Officer grabbed the other end of the tray. Said, "Man, you ain't getting." It. He said, "Man, get your hand off my food, man." You know what I'm saying? He said, "Man, you ain't getting no tray. You already had a tray." So they tussling over the tray, and next thing you know, bang, bang, he take off on the officer. So the officer, this officer in particular, start fighting back. So they in there rumbling. I mean, they getting it in. They just rumbling all in the kitchen. So the kitchen people call the code, say, you know, 1033, cold blue. That means, I guess, it's a, it's a police is, is involved. So they come flooding in there. They rumbling in there. They get up in there. They jump all on the man, tussle with him, try to get him subdued. Then they start doing all the extra stuff, trying to hit you when you down, you know, grab all on you, bend you all up. So then dudes in there watching that. And sometimes dudes, you know, this early in my bit, this one dudes had camaraderie. This one dudes was about it. They like, oh, no, y'all ain't going to do that. So dudes start getting up now you got a potential riot situation you know what i'm saying it'll be a potential riot situation when you do that type of stuff when it's police versus convict and they ain't gonna let you do that so usually when they try to do all that slick stuff try to beat you and get you some extra punches in on you they'll do that when they got you away from the masses the rest of the population because when they do it in your plain eyesight man dudes usually gonna buck on that because dudes gonna rationalize look that could be me I want people to come to my aid. What's up? What's up? So, you know, when dudes got up and started, you know, you know, making their, their uh, voice known that they ain't going for that, then, you know what I'm saying, they sliding up. Oh, oh, y'all, back up, back up, back up. They'll call more police. And next thing you know, you got 40, 50 police all in the child hall, all in the kitchen. But while all this going on, while you tripping, dudes will get up and go get back in the line again there self and try to beat the dudes. You know what I'm saying? All for this garbage that they feed them. But it all depends on what they got. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, over the years, they done had some many rides, man. When I first went into prison, man, like I told y'all many times in other stories, man, they had good food when we first went into prison. And they supposed to always have good food because they get a, a certain type of money a year to, to feed us, you know, from the state. And the food that they order, you know, be really good food. But what they do now is they take that food and they serve it in the staff kitchen. In the the garbage food, the, 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 the non-edible food, they serve to us when it's supposed to be the other way around. These people are coming off the street, they coming from work. The food that they eat is supposed to be what they bring in their self or whatever the staff have to feed them, but they get all the good food, man. When I first got into prison, man, they had steak gums, uh, fried eggs, scrambled eggs, uh, real hamburgers, real soybean burgers, uh, you know, just anything you can think of, real potatoes, mashed potatoes, french fries, fried chicken, you know, they had all of this stuff because that's what they put their order in for and that's what the state pay for. But then what they started doing is taking that food and feeding it only to the staff members and feeding us all the bulk meat, the sour uh, 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 fruit, the, the spoiled vegetables, all of this garbage, man, when you go in there and look at your tray, the tray dirty, you know, like I said, you got flat traps up here, the tray stink, the food stink, it looks unedible, it's just, it's just, to me, it was disgusting, you know what I'm saying, I long ago stopped eating it, it was disgusting, you know, but, but like I say, that's, that's uh, over time, it just changed, they, they started doing that, but yet at the same time, when we get some visitors, if somebody's coming in from out of state or somebody coming in from Richmond, the head office or something like that, they'll immediately change the menu. Usually they'll put the menu out or the menu will be out for a whole week. And you can look at the menu and tell what they got over there every day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know. But when you know when there's somebody coming there, there's a big wig because they'll change the menu. Now we'll go from having 
you know, garbage all week or, or, or every day to now breakfast we got fried eggs and, and uh, bacon with sausages and pancakes. Man, we never get that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We never get that. So when they got that and then for lunch, they might got corn dogs and french fries and all this and all that. We don't never eat. We, we never eat like that. So when you see that on the menu, you know either somebody's coming in there that's a big wig or, it's, or, or either it's a holiday. You see what I'm saying? So they'll do that just to throw them people off because them people gonna come in and they're going to walk around. They're going to evaluate the prison. They're going to evaluate the kitchen. They're going to evaluate the blocks. They're going to evaluate everything. So when they see the menu or they walk in the kitchen and they see you eating this type of food, it gives them the false impression that that's how we eat every day when that is far from the truth. But that was first telltale sign that I knew that these people be playing a lot of games and they be doing a lot of stuff that they don't supposed to be doing and they be getting away with it. And so it's like, when you get on a prison that's new, usually you gonna get all of that good food. You gonna get that type of food because they knew and they gonna serve you that type of food until they get in the comfort zone or until they get the prison in order. And then they're gonna take that food and move it over to the staff side and start feeding us the, you know, the bull jab. And that's what it always be. So like I say, when they do have something good, man, it can cause a lot of problems because they may have uh, 60, 70% of the people that go to the child hall to eat every meal. You know, the rest of the people eat out of their cell or eat out of commissary. But when they know they got something good over there or somebody coming that day, then you you might get 100% of, of the people that, that don't usually go to child hall come to the child hall. So they be overloaded. You know, they, they don't have enough food. They don't have enough trays. Now that's one of the worst things that could possibly happen in prison when you're dealing with that food. If you have something that's going on that day and you got uh, special people coming in and you say, say you're serving fried chicken or you're serving french fries or you're serving pizza, you see what I'm saying? If you're serving that type of stuff and you're not prepared for the mass, uh, the masses of the compound to come to eat, then you're gonna have a problem because we have seen that over the years. People are coming there to eat because they got pizza on the menu and french fries. And they come in there to eat, but you might be the last block that's ordered to come in there to eat. Now, if you the last block, you get in there, they might get through half of your block, which might be 80-some 80, 80 people, but you might have two blocks in a, in a child hall. So you talk about 160 people, and turn around, they got 100 meals. You see what I'm saying? They got 100 pieces left. So when it gets to the end and they ain't got no more pizza or, or french fries, what they supposed to have for everybody else and the rest of the compound to eat, now you're trying to tell 60, 80 people that they got to take uh, bologna or cheese sandwiches. You know, it's, nah, they ain't going for that, man. They ain't going for that. They going to turn, they gonna turn the spot up. Well, we ain't got no more. This all we got. Well, y'all we got to go get it. You know what I'm saying? These are things that cause us a riot. It'll cause a riot in that joint. And they've had riots over the years. They had a French fry riot on um, Buckingham, I believe. And they had a chicken riot. You know what I'm saying? Fried chicken riot. So those two riots alone, I, when I say riot, I mean they took over the whole compound. It's, it's just a problem. Everybody's fighting. Everybody's bucking authority. Police is rumbling with inmates, convicts. Convicts rumbling with each other. They ain't going to their cell. They ain't locking up. Weapons is involved. It's just like total chaos. Everything is going on crazy. So when that happens, man, then it's going to shut the whole compound down. It's going to shut the whole compound down. So they learn from that. And then when that did jump off the French fry ride and the fried chicken ride, then they stopped that in the system completely. Before I left the system, you ain't getting no fried chicken, you ain't getting no french fries because they have already had riots about both of those uh, items. So you ain't getting them, you know what I'm saying? And then normally, like I say, if they do have them, they might have it on a holiday or something like that or when they think they got a visitor coming. But when they have them, dudes is going over there to get it because they want it because they've been eating garbage for so long, they want it. And even the fried chicken and the french fries that you get is going to still be kind of like garbage. It ain't going to be top of the line. It ain't going to be, you know what I'm saying, like no real good, you know, quality food, but it's going to be that. And when you eating the way we eating, that's still a plus. You see what I'm saying? That's still a plus. So dude's going to go over there to get it. And if you run out, you most definitely going to have a problem. Trust me. Man, you got dudes that be in that kitchen, man. They be fighting over... Man, garbage, man. I mean, pure garbage, you know. And then you got dudes that got certain type of diets. Like you got the dudes is Muslim. Most of the dudes is Muslims or Jewish. They can sign up for 
uh, what they call a kosher diet. Now, if they sign up for the kosher diet, you know, they got to prove that they've been in a religious program for a certain amount of time, six months or whatever, whatever, and they get approved for they have this kosher diet. Use on the kosher diet, man, depends on what com compound you on. They usually serve you like raw vegetables, raw cabbage, uh, a lot of beans, pork and beans, a lot of beans, um, you know, carrots, grapefruit, uh, real onions, whole half of onions, you know, stuff like that dudes get to eat, which is way more healthier than what you're going to eat when you eat out of the regular menu. You know, they might get peanut butter and jelly sandwich. They might get a little tub of peanut butter, a little tub of jelly, and a couple of slices of bread. They can fix it the way they want to fix it, but that's what's going to come on the tray. So you had a lot of people trying to get on the kosher diet, but they couldn't prove that they should be on the kosher diet because they actually wasn't taking the program. But they tried to get on it anyway because they knew that that food was more healthier and better for them than what they was eating. And they may not have no money to be going to commissary to buy food enough to sustain them every day. You see what I'm saying? So all these dynamics go along with that child hall, man. And like I say, it always goes down in the child hall. If you go over there, you better be prepared. And the thing about it is they're going to pat you down when you're coming out of the child hall. So if you go over there and you take that Bethlehem or you take a weapon, you got to hide it real good where as to you can beat the, the pat down, the shake down. And a lot of dudes do it a lot of ways, man. They might have something on them and they might have a dude behind them and a couple of dudes behind them and they'll go through the shake down and they'll wait and they try to peel off to the side so the dude can hand back off the, the junk to them that they had. It'd be a lot of things going on, man, but you never know when you're dealing with these type of situations because, like I say, when you're in that child hall, if you're not prepared, you might get late, man. And then especially when they came up with all these new prison deeds, high level security prison because now they got the gun in there. But before they had the gun, you had to wait for them to come in there to break up a fight. You had to wait for them to come in there to intervene with whatever was going on with you. Now you got to depend on them now to save you because if you only losing in and a dude is putting that Bethlehem in you or a dude is rumbling with you, you ain't got no, no recourse to stop him if you can't physically stop him yourself, but you're going to rely on the police. But when the police come running in there, if you, if you got it, man, I ain't seen it. Like I told y'all before, I ain't seen no police run up on that Bethlehem because they too scared to get hit their self. They going to holler, whistle, call this, call that code. Man, get up off of them, stop. Put the weapon down, put the weapon down. All of that foolishness. But they not going to jump on the dude unless they got a clear angle where they feel like they can, you know, you know, disarm him on their own. But other than that, man, you on your own. I done seen dudes get, be up in there, man, getting that Bethlehem put in them repeatedly. I seen a dude that was in there with me one time, and he got to argue with the other dude, but they already had beef, so they was going to meet in the kitchen. They was trying to explain their beef. They was trying to squash the beef, and it got out of hand because the words got messed up. The words got misconstrued. The words got offensive. And next thing you know, boom, somebody get punched in the face. Ah! Pull that Bethlehem out. And, man, he just charged them, caught him in the corner, started hitting them dudes, and swinging back, swinging back, trying to rumble them. And he just baka, baka, baka. Man, that dude got stabbed about 12, 13 times. Blood everywhere. Police coming in there. They hollering, put the weapon there, put the weapon there. Man, ain't nobody listening to that dude is in a fit of rage. You know what I'm saying? He in a fit of rage and he's in combat. So, you know, you like I said, you could be in there and you could get stabbed to death in that kitchen, man. You get stabbed to death, you get beat to death in that kitchen before somebody could come to save you. So you're going to have to be able to save yourself. You're going to have to be prepared for whatever goes on. When you go in that child hall, you better come ready or don't even come in there at all. Because like I say, the doors are locked, you're on your own. And, and it, goes, it goes down. Man. It goes down vicious in that child hall, man. Anything that I have seen on a regular compound on the population... I've seen that times 10 in the child hall because dudes will make their move in the child hall because they feel like they're in an isolated position. His homeboys ain't going to jump in, and, you know, vice versa because they're going to confront you and they know them doors locked and they know you ain't got nowhere to run. You ain't got nowhere to go to. You know what I'm saying? I've seen dudes get attacked in there, get the rumbling. They get scared. They get the running, you know, literally like. Kids playing tag. One dude on one side of the table like, man, no, that's it, that's it, that's over. This dude trying to get to him. I done seen dudes 
climb up on the table, man. Why dudes eating their food? And dude get mad because you done climbed up on the table. Now you got another beef. Dude trying to run with you. Man, what you way ain't my tray? You know, because they ain't getting you no more food. So, it, it, I mean, like I said, it just be pure chaos. I never, ever felt comfortable in them kitchens, man. Never felt comfortable in there. Whenever I was in there, I was always on point. My head was always on a swivel because I know it goes down in there. You know what I'm saying? I remember being on there on Augusta, man. And we, I had a homeboy up there, man. His name was Madlock. And Madlock was really from Alexandria, Virginia. You know, but they, you know, they call all that Northern Virginia. You know, Alexandria, uh, uh, Arlington, Maryland, D.C., they call all us Northern Virginia, you know, because most of the population is going to be Tidewater or Richmond or something like that. So they call us Northern Virginia because anybody that was from, you know, Alexandria on up, they was considered, you know, you know, out of bounds. They D.C. dudes or, you know, they all came up under the umbrella of D.C. So, man, we had this uh, homie named Madlock, and Madlock was nice with this kickboxing. Now, you talking about back in the 80s, man, late 80s, 88, 89. But Madlock was known for this kickboxing, which kickboxing wasn't even seriously, you know, uh, popular back then. But Madlock was known for it, man. He'd get out on the yard or he'd go to the gym and he'd be kicking that bag, man. Leg kicks, high kicks or whatever. So he known to know this stuff. And he'd have put a couple of dudes in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? He'd have put a couple of dudes in the dirt, dudes, and tried them out on the yard because they always want to try it. They want to see if it's real or if it's just talk. Madlock them roundhouse kick dudes and you know, hit dudes with karate moves or whatnot, and the hurt dudes out there on that yard and on that compound, so dudes know what his, what his, what, you know, his M.O. is. I can remember being in that joint one day, man, and Madlock was in the line, and, you know, you be in this line going through the, through the child hall, going through the joint, you got to come up and turn, but they got the bars that separate the whole block where everybody eat at. So you got to come in. When you come in, you automatically in the line. Man, dudes be skipping their line so they can get through and then come back around, try to beat the deuce, depending on what it is. A lot of times dudes try to beat the deuce. I know at breakfast they're going to try to beat the deuce with eggs. If they got scrambled eggs or anything like that, they're going to try to beat the deuce. If they got pancakes or anything like that, they're going to try to beat the deuce. And on the evening time, man, if they got any type of fish, any type of uh, burgers, or anything like that, dudes gonna try to beat the dudes, cause that that's what I'm saying. They got they got to eat right there. And a lot of dudes be doing a lot of different things on the compound, man. They might be using drugs, they might be uh spending their money on send outs, anything, but they ain't got the money for the commissary, so they, they call them dudes trade monsters. They're gonna come over there and they're gonna try to get every trade they can to sustain their hunger. Because they ain't got nothing at home in their box, nothing in they sell in their box. So Dudes will be skipping in line, but some dudes will take offense to that. You know what I'm saying? They've been waiting in line for 10 minutes or whatever to get to the front. They don't want you coming and getting in front of them. That's even more time that they got to wait in the line. So, man, uh, this cat coming in one day, he sees homeboys up in the line. He trying to slide up in the line and get up there with him to get behind them. So he going up, and, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, and he going up. But when he get to Madlock, Madlock don't want to move. Madlock like, man, nah, man, I'm right here, bro. You got you to gotta stay behind me. So dude like move your arm, but Madlock got his arm on the, on the bar. You know what I'm saying? So he can't walk through unless he literally walk through Madlock. So he said, man, move, man. Madlock said, bro, I'm not letting you cut me in the line, man. I'm trying to eat, man. I've been in line for 10, 15 minutes. So dude, like, man, you don't get your arm out of the way, man. I'll I beat you up in here. So man, like, turn around and man, like, looking at him like, you'll do what? And he must not have knew who, <laughs> he must not knew who man, like, was or either his people. I fought them because they should have told him, bro, this ain't the tree you want to be barking up. So man, man, like, turn around and ask him what? And he tried to swing on man, like, <laughs> Madlock slid out the way, bagged up, and kicked this dude straight in the chest. Boom! He fall back. He's stumbling, hitting other people because dude's in the line. So now dude starts scattering, getting out of the way because they see what's going on. So dude, Madlock jumped over the rail so he could be, you know, more, more have more room. He out there on the power floor. So when dude get up, he he. Dip and come up under the rail, come up out there, talk, so what's up? What's up? So he tried to charge Man Lock. Man, Man Lock did a roundhouse kick and kicked this dude. When I tell you dead on the button, I mean dead on the button. Bop! Knocked him, slam out. One kick. One kick. Roundhouse kick. That was his that was his patented move. 
knocked them out. So he had his homeboys in there. They like acting like they want to do something. So man, like turn on them. Tell me, so what's up? What's up? You know, so now the kitchen in the uproar, everybody standing up, eating their trays, now standing up because, you know, dudes ready. Dudes don't know what's going on. They don't know if what's going to pop off. Dudes trying to eat their food because they'll come running in there too when there's a commotion like that and they're trying to clear the kitchen. Whether you finish eating or not, they will clear the kitchen and you stuck. You ain't even got to eat your food and it ain't like they're going to let you come back to eat. So they come running all up in there, man, and everything like, what's up? Man, like, holding these doors off. The police come running in there. Dude still unconscious. Knocked out from one roundhouse kick. So they come running in there, man. They see the uh, the, 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 the the kitchen workers. They they pure, I mean, I ain't going to say kitchen workers. Kitchen supervisors, the people that work there for the state. They pure snitch. It's him. That's the one fighting him and him. Woo, woo, woo. So they point him out. They go over to Madlock. They look cautious with Madlock because, like I say, they know him. Madlock had been on the gospel before I got on it. So they already know him. They know what he's about. They know his capabilities. They know he's dangerous. So, you know, they go over there and get mad locked, man. They get the other dudes, man, that's arguing or whatever. They pick the dude up, bring him to consciousness, get him up, you know, drag him on out there. He's still woozy. You know what I'm saying? They take mad lock out. They take him out and they clear the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't even eating in there that day. I was in there talking to somebody, but this is something that I actually seen. But I've known mad lock to be out there on that yard and knock dudes out with kicks. I know man like to be in there in that gym and they see him working on that bag and they think he faking and somebody say something to him, get dropped. Madlock was one of them dudes, man. He knew that stuff for real. He won't fake it with it. And if you come up on him and talking that foolishness, he going to give you the business. You know what I'm saying? They could have said that the young boy, man, his homies. I, I blame his homies because they knew Madlock was about that work. And they did not tell that man. Madlock, man, hit that dude with a roundhouse kick. And later on, we find out this dude's jaw was broke. He broke his jaw. You understand me? Mel, I got locked up, though. He was in there for about two months. They put him right back on the yard. Because, like I say, when you own Augusta back in the days like that, just for a regular fist fight and you ain't used that Bethlehem, you ain't even going to stay in the hole that long, maybe a couple of weeks. Two months is excessive, but they probably did that because he had history on the compound. And he had history of putting that work in. So, you know what I'm saying? They left him back there for two months, but they let him right back out on the yard, man. Then you had all these dudes acting like, oh, yeah, that's the dude did this and such, 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 man. Like, they going to get him. Man, like, ain't tripping, man. And man, like, ain't tripping. Man, like, wait for that rumble, man. He wait for that beat. He live for that type of stuff. You got these type of dudes in prison, man. And you got these type of dudes that ain't to be played with. You can think they to be played with until you try them. Or you see a dude, they say, oh, he no karate. Oh, he know how to box. Oh, he did. But you always go ahead and they say, man, he ain't built like that. And them be the ones that end up with missing teeth. <laughs> them be the ones that end up with missing teeth. Them be the ones that end up with swollen eyes, broken jaws, and everything. Because they trying to make a name for themselves. But if you pick the wrong dude to try to make a name for yourself, you will end up as a casualty, man. And like I say, that kitchen, man, was so... So dangerous, man. That was a dangerous spot to be in because, like I say, dudes will sneak that Bethlehem in there and they get that Bethlehem in there and they worried about you might got a buddy that might help him and might try to jump him or something. They just going to use that Bethlehem on you, man, when you're in that kitchen where it's isolated, the doors is locked, can't nobody get in. They're going to put that work in on you, man, and wait for the police to come get them because they don't even want to go back to the compound because they know you got some allies out there. You see what I'm saying? So if a dude really plotting on you, the best place to get you is in that child hall. And trust and believe me, it goes down in there because I done seen that Bethlehem get put in a dude in that child hall and it won't a pretty sight to see. I'm talking about dude running all around, jumping over trees, trying to get out the way, and dude just walk him down with that jump like Jason. You understand me? And it's it's just vicious. And, and I'm telling you, man, that was another reason why I didn't want to go to the kitchen. Not so much for myself. I just ain't want to be around that type of chaos. I didn't want to be the type of dude that had to be laying down on the ground, waiting for them to finish this, that, and the third, the investigation and all that. So I just avoided all that. Only way I went to that kitchen if I had business over there or if I had something that I had to address myself. But trust and believe me, dudes know in that prison, if they done did some time, that child hall, that's a death trap. Thank you, special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious.
that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love. My family love me, and that really—that's that's really the, all that counts. 